Well, I am very excited to be here with Dave Dicker of MDC. Dave, thank you so much for being with us here in the streets here in downtown Atascadero, California, on the Central Coast. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much. Here we are, we're keeping it real on Atascadero. Definitely keeping it real. And um, Dave, I have so many questions uh, for you tonight. But first of all, you are holding in your wonderful hands there your memoir biography, which is Memoir from a Damaged Civilization. And that just, just published like a month or two back, right? That's right. It, it actually came out about, we're having the book release party yeah. Wednesday in right. Berkeley. Right. Uh, it's been officially out for maybe four weeks now. Uh, yeah. I insisted I get some because we toured last month. Yeah. And then, why are we going to go on tour and not promote the book? And uh, happy to say I've been able to you know, sell between 20 and 30 books a gig, and I usually do a little book reading, and I, and I will tonight as excellent, well. Excellent. Yeah, I saw a lot of fans at your merch booth tonight uh, definitely gobbling up uh, a lot of your merch, but in particular the book itself. And I've, I've done a little research on it. I uh, look forward to reviewing it on InnerEdgeMusic.com, but uh, I've read some reviews and really positive reviews on Amazon.com, uh, five stars. A lot of people t saying basically this is uh, in some respects better than even like Henry Rollins' uh, Get in the Van and other punk rock memoirs and really positive feedback from fans right well thanks it, you know uh i have read a few of those amazon interviews okay. and, and people have been saying really sweet things to me yeah. uh, you know to be fair to uh henry and to anyone else he wrote that book as more of a tour diary yeah. on tour in the 80s and i got to reflect on this 30 years yeah. but um i found it important for me to share uh, where I came from and yeah. what, what was going on in my head in fourth grade and seventh grade yeah, and yeah. high school that led me to, you know, uh, I, I knew right away I wanted to make music and, 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 and go around. And we were talking before about yeah. how I had my acoustic guitar. And yeah, I was going to I was going to say that mid 70s. Yeah. And, you know, I played a lot of, you know, Bob Dylan type yeah. things. And we, we talked a big Steve Earle fan. Yeah. But I'll put we, that plug in. Definitely, definitely. Big ups to Steve Earle. And we talked off camera earlier before the uh, film started rolling about kind of your early influences, you know, kind of a, a singer songwriter who would travel around and really influenced by that early sort of political uh, aspects of uh, a folk music really right yeah it was definitely a, a woody guthrie yeah. uh component yeah. uh that went into what i was doing and mm -hmm. uh and i found myself uh, at the tail end of uh the anti-vietnam war movement yeah. the anti-richard nixon movement yeah. and the beginning of the uh anti-nuclear power movement in the mid late 70s definitely. and uh, i found myself floating down to austin texas yeah. uh with my acoustic guitar and I was like, you know, just standing in front of clubs and, you know, they, I guess the kids call it busking now, <laughs> you know, but I was just out there, whether it was at the bus station or yeah. at, at a club called Raul's, which okay. was, you know, which was a Chicano club that ended up becoming a, quite a punk rock hot spot with the dicks and the big boys. Yes, yes. And, um, you know, I just, it, it, it just sort of was happening around me. Uh, you know, everything from you start hearing about the Sex Pistols and they came to Texas yeah. and I was living in Texas, you know, having grown up in New York. Yeah. And, you know, of course, you you know, yeah, you're hearing about Talking Heads, yeah. The Clash, yeah. Blondie, Ramones, yeah. Devo. Yeah. All that stuff was affecting me. And I was very tired of the stadium rock yeah. uh, shtick that was going on in the mid late 70s. It yeah. was it had its moments. It was fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember seeing The Who and not realizing Peter Townsend had a cast on his arm. Oh, wow. I mean, it was so far away. You know, yeah, I was probably yeah. 50, 60 yards away. Yeah. And well, just we interviewed uh, Captain Sensible Dave Vanian recently at the Roxy in Los Angeles, and they talked about that. I mean, in the, 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 the sort of the degree to which the punk rock movement was kind of a reaction of the indulgence of the 70s prog rock bands and the, it, the Who really and all was. that kind of stuff. And, be, and, and it really was. And, you know, and people talk about it as well. Uh, the music got so intricate and yeah. you know and you had to be so great and yeah. then you know a lot of us you know let's take it back down to three chords yeah. Yeah. sing your guts out about what you're feeling yeah. and you know we're not all going to sound like freddie mercury and we're yeah. not you know yeah, yeah. and i love freddie mercury yeah. but you know uh you know just you're not going to play guitar like Jimi hendrix and you know uh, stevie ray vaughn yeah. 
but still you you have you have something to share with your guitar and you know and obviously in texas bands like the butthole surfers yes. Yes. um and gibby haynes yeah. and, and, and uh, paul of that band you know had something to share that obviously moved a new generation and you know they weren't technically you know jimmy page yeah. or uh you know that ilk but they, they were the astounding musician experimental and you know Sonic Youth would be typical of that, Definitely. and you know, and then and, and then it did build up. And the Dead Kennedys were a great band. Definitely. Black Flag, a great band. Circle Jerks, a great band. Bad Brains, a great band. And MDC threw our hat in the ring, and we were the Stains first, and we became MDC. And also a great band, for the record. Yeah, I got to throw that in there. Yes. Well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, and anyway, I'm showing the book up here. Yeah, yeah. It's on Manic D Press. I want to put that for my editor publisher right. who. Believed in me and and, uh, and spent hours and hours on the phone with me, and um, well, Dave, I wanted to ask you about the book. I mean, we've interviewed some folks that have done uh, biographies or, or uh, have written um, different things. Uh, Hugh Cornwall from the Stranglers. Uh, uh, Ben Watt from uh, Everything But The Girl. And I wanted to ask you about the creative process. I mean, being such an evocative uh, lyricist who's able to kind of put, it paints such a, a rich picture of things, both political and personal, what was it like for you to actually write this book? I mean, was it easy? Did it flow out? Or was it was it a little bit, uh, did it bring up certain feelings? I, I had a lot of stories. Yeah. You know, I felt like, you know, and I just never had a chance to put them down. So I had this thing called Millions of Dead Calmness. And I, I would talk about everything from working at UPS to being a special ed teacher. And, you know. A lot of people don't realize. I'd read your bio uh, in the late 90s, went back to school to get a teaching credential, correct? Yes, I did. Uh, I started, uh, you know, it was always kind of in the plan uh -huh. in my life, you know. Uh, and it really fits in with kind of your political activism, giving back to the underserved, kind of having a, a, an influence, right? And I like to look at special ed as, you know, and, and punk rock. There is a connection. Is there? uh, there's an ADD, okay. Uh, okay. you know, restlessness okay. that, you know, unable to sit in a classroom yeah. in the same chair for three hours at a time wow. that I've noticed that same restlessness with, you know, my punk brethren. And I, I share some of that myself, yeah. just yeah. that inability to shut my mouth <laughs> and not, you know, you know, whatever, yeah. whether it's during the Pledge of Allegiance or whether it's talking about police or apartheid in South Africa, or vegetarianism, yeah. yes. or prison sentences for nonviolent drug, yeah. you know, yeah. drug-related offenses. And I hope Obama f lets a lot more people out of prison. He's done a right. few different things, and I, I hear 34 here and 65 yeah. there, but, yeah. you know, we're, we're a country with hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people in, in jail yeah. all across this country on a federal and a state level yeah. Yeah. for victimless drug-related crimes. Yeah. For, for a first-world nation, we have the most uh, populace in prison, other than China, but China's a, a communist country. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I think it's even more than China really? as well, if you, if you look at that statistic. Yeah. Uh, you know, on a per-person level, there's more people in jail in China, but there's also a billion and a half people. Yeah, yeah. But uh, in California, it's an incredible rate of incarceration. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, yeah, you know, speaking truth to power, that's yeah. that's my angle of, of where I came into punk. It was so, uh, as well uh, about sexuality and themes yeah. and not wanting to get squished into the status quo. Yeah. I mean, you guys were definitely, you know, for the record, one of the early political punk bands that really took a stand against uh, the homophobia, you know, in the punk scene. I mean, famous in the book how we yeah. played with the Bad Brains yeah. in uh, 1982. We take up, they were playing Texas. We met each other and, and we went down to uh, uh, Houston, Texas to play. Yeah. And we were, you know, uh, we actually met them just like a few days before and they yeah. said, why don't you join us on tour? Yeah. And they really loved our no war, no KKK, yeah. you know, aware uh, that the cops abuse minorities, yeah. uh, you know, and just our more human rights oriented mm -hmm. topics in our songwriting. Yeah. But, you know, they had a streak of Coptic Christianity in there that was more than just we don't like gay people. It was like blood caught faggots deserve yeah. to die. You heard, you heard the and, term faggot in a lot of early I, punk rock stuff. Yeah, I yeah. couldn't I couldn't abide by it. And there's there was a piece of me that has a fluid sexuality, feel part of the queer community. Okay. I've done drag at times in my life. I've uh, you know, I, in my own head, you know, I describe it 
my sexuality, my own head can go in so many different directions. Uh -huh. It's not labeled down to I am this. It's, it's not binary. That. It's on a continuum, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And, you know, oh, I'm not into that until you do it and then you're into it. <laughs> Don't knock it till you try it. Uh, truer well, words have well, be never been said from uh, Dick know, here tonight. I hear some people say, oh, I would never do that. And then, you know, until you do it and then you've done it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think it's a big thing coming out right now with the trans community and the intersex community uh, uh, as well and the continuum and, and uh, I mean do you have fans coming up at your shows from the like LGBTQ community very and th much that so. say hey very man Dave so. you were a huge influence man you were speaking truth to power when nobody else was talking about uh, my you know identity issues whatever many people I, I'd say on a tour you know anywhere from 10 to 20 people wow. and there's a band called gloss who is a, a trans band a hardcore band okay. and uh, yeah we we've been one of the people that walk the walk and talk the talk and uh, you know and just told people you're wrong about that you know and uh, you know in the early hardcore there was streaks of homophobia yeah. slash racism in there yeah, yeah, and you know we just part of our troop to power was that you know uh, you're wrong, you know, and, and here we are 20, 30 years later, 60% of the population is for gay marriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, in 1982, in 1980, 1978, it was not like that. It was, yeah. you know, 25 to 27% were in favor totally, totally. of, of uh, freedom of sexuality. But I think history will show that MDC was a band that really had a vision of progressive politics. Um, I mean, you know, you guys were right. I mean, looking back at the Reagan era, all the things that, you, you know, protesting the Pope's visit to San Francisco, doing things, sticking your neck out in ways that other bands weren't willing to do at the time. I think, it, I think you know, the songs we sing about the multi-death corporation, yeah. about corporate death burger, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, about vegetarianism with yeah. chicken squawk, yeah. about, you know, social alienation, alienization, like my family's a little weird, yeah. or I hate work, or, yeah. you know, or about the landlord raising your rent. Yep. It's kind of funny. When I wrote the song Greedy and Pathetic about the yeah. landlord raising yeah. our rent, yeah. it went from 85 to $95. I, I don't know who's now paying. Now we laugh at that. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, that was really hardcore, man, back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, we just played in the in the Bay Area, and it's, it's incredible it's what insane. people are paying. A closet costs $1,500, a yeah. little closet, yeah. Well, um, you know, uh, Dave, I want to ask you a question. This is a question that I asked Dick from the Subhumans, uh, a band I, just like MDC, I really respect Dick's lyricism, his ability. And I, I saw in your merch booth uh, a split that you guys have done yeah, with we, uh, we did Citizen a Fish. With Citizen Fish yeah. and, we, and the Subhumans over the last years. We, we just played with them at a festival. Well, we played with them two in the last year, uh, twice uh, at, at big festivals in England, and we're, we're going back to the Rebellion Fest this year. Excellent. It's a big uh, American invasion thing going on okay. with Off and the Adolescents and the Dwarves and a uh, lot, a lot of bands, uh, Dictators yeah. and uh, Adolescents, and yeah. um, I know I'm leaving out a ton of them, yeah. well, DRI. Yeah, yeah, lots of great classics. Well, um, Dave, one question I asked Dick was, you know, looking back on the lyricism and all the themes in all of both of your band's works through the years, um, you know, there's a lot of targets. A lot of people were called out, a lot of systems of oppression, personal, political, uh, animal rights, um, social stratification, et cetera, et cetera. So here we are, th you know, many decades since some of those first lyrics were put down on paper. And uh, what do you, you know, looking back, I mean, what are, are all of those targets still legitimate targets to be rallying against? Are there new targets? What would you say were like the top three sort of um, forces of oppression that are still existing in the 21st century? You know, for, you know, for one, racism, and for two, homophobia. Yeah, yeah. You know, this country was built on 400 years of slavery mm -hmm. and racism, segregation, mm -hmm. the whole idea that it could be washed away in a, a, sh a relatively short amount of decades yeah. uh, is laughable and you know and hence it's bared out by all the police related issues that have come out yeah. in Ferguson Missouri in Charleston South Carolina all over the yeah. freaking place yeah, yeah, yeah. where you know African American people or people of color yeah. or just regular people yeah. are put in chokeholds and killed and mm. this whole you know, where they don't shoot to slow people down, they shoot them to kill, yeah. and they're trained. Yeah. I think it has to, you know, be, you know, uh, change those policies. Okay. And I think the whole thing, we're putting video cams on police oh. cars okay. and on, on policemen's bodies yeah. Yeah. to monitor what the hell is going on. Yeah. Uh, 
And I, they started doing that, and the amount of abusive behavior has gone down incredibly. Yeah. When it's, you know that when the watcher is being watched, it does tend to influence behavior, definitely. Yeah. Yep. It's Mike Smith, he's the bass player of MDC, oh, yeah, my yeah. roommate, and. Uh, a great guy. Uh, he's, we've been uh, making music together in MDC for 10 years. We, we have an MDC country project where right. we slow down some of the MDC hardcore electric songs, and we've written a, a you know a bevy of new songs. Oh, I would and, love to hear some of that stuff, Mike. What's it been like to tour with this uh, this guy over the years, man? Really amazing, uh, amazing lyricist, amazing uh, sort of inspiration to so many people out there, right? Uh, of course, no. He's a me. He, dude, he's he's the man. He's the man with the plan. He changed the world if he can. Uh, that's the song right there. Anyway, no, no. Dave is just he's had he's a visionary. I mean, he puts his music with his heart, and it, it's it's just a lot better than a lot of other people that are doing um, you know the punk rock thing and thinking oh it's just like you know party and bullshit. It's actually with depth and thought and love and life and it's awesome. Yeah, no, it's amazing. Dave, I know we got to get going here in a second, but a couple other questions for you. Um, for and I'm sure you've covered it in your memoir, and I'm really looking forward to reading that, man, and doing a review on Inner Edge yeah, Music. Let, me, let me officially, bam, look forward to the full review on InnerEdgeMusic.com. But uh, MDC, the first U.S. punk band to ever play in Russia. I mean, that is that is some historic. I'm write about it in the book. All right. Any teasers for folks out there that might be interested in hearing about that? I mean, because that's such an interesting thing about um, so many barriers were broke by MDC. And what was it like when you went to Russia? I mean, were there fans that had been exposed? Because I'm sure punk rock and rock and roll in Russia was basically outlawed. So folks that were familiar with their, your stuff right. had to be familiar through sort of illegal and channels. Actually, and that, it's been that way for years because yeah. people probably learned English from Beatle albums, yeah. okay. you know, and yeah. the Rolling Stone albums. And, yeah. of course, here we are coming decades after that. So people, amazing how some people speak very good English in, in oh. Ru Russia. It was a wonderful experience. Yeah. Uh, people were so ready in 1993 to experience the freedoms and... Uh, liberation and yeah. not being a totalitarian state mm -hmm. you know it's a little unfortunate that you know economic control and just what went on with the putin yeah. and uh you know authoritarian former kgb uh, member basically it'd be like a george bush former cia member uh, george bush senior uh, being in president yeah. yeah yeah but you know putin's really heavy and uh the punks i know there really have a hard time and uh you know uh Pussy Riot, which is a, is a, is a great thing uh, is going on there. I met one of the people in Pussy Riots. I've read in, reviews uh, where you definitely give them shout outs. It's kind of the um, an example of punk rock in the 21st century. Just DIY, a couple young females doing their thing. Yeah, man. I, I spoke to their entourage backstage and they definitely knew who MDC was. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, yeah, it's amazing how we affect each other. Uh, going to a culture like uh, Russia was just totally wonderful. But, you know, we've traveled to Brazil we've wow. traveled we've traveled to a lot of backwaters mm -hmm. and uh, it's always great how music and cultural uh, awareness and yeah. freedom yeah. and animal rights yeah. and uh, eco ecological movements yeah. all kind of you know it doesn't matter if you're American or Russian or whatever and just basically the idea that we all want to be happy we all want to create art we all want to raise our children in peace yeah. love the people we want to live love wonderful. you know um, I had a really wonderful experience there it's in the book uh, right. uh, we, we, we at the end we played in Kaliningrad and I waved our ride off and we're coming through the border on the way home oh, wow. and uh, I find out at the border no and yet it's impossible <laughs> to uh, forbidden oh. to uh, leave the country any way different than where you entered. Oh, with the type visa we had, okay. and I was just there. You were stuck in the you stuck in the USSR there, or in Russia, well, excuse well, me, my, but my dad former had left, and yeah. I, we were going to have to you know hitchhike back up around Kaliningrad, pet through the Baltics, back to St. Petersburg, right. around around the sea there, and back into Finland. That, but we were at that border, yeah. and they said it was impossible. I said, "Can I speak to my manager on the phone?" They gave me a dead phone. And I held a handle for a couple of minutes, and then I came out and said the old-fashioned old way of just saying, I was told I could buy a special permit from you oh. for $100 a person. The special and permit, yes. out of five hundred five $100 bills. Okay. And they were like, 
He's trying to say no, no, and by the third, of course. Yeah, money talks. That's and, one uh, important lesson I from Dave. Signed what looked like a train schedule, uh, and uh, we were on our way, and we left a couple band T-shirts, a couple cassettes, uh, and. Uh, Seems like a fair. <laughs> it's a fair exchange. Uh, they they got to listen to something across the border. Walked into Poland, caught a train, okay. and uh, two days later we were in Northern Ireland playing Belfast. All right, very good, very good. Well, that is one of many exciting stories that you too can check out here at Memoirs of a Damaged Civilization. Dave, thank you so much for your time, and again recommend this book. We'll be reading it very very soon. Thank you so much. Thank you very much too. Bye bye.